after defeating the one-horned bear. They proceeded to butcher it for a hot pot, and Toriko found the flavor of bear meat to be simple yet as delicious as a home-cooked meal. While enjoying their meal, Komatsu was startled to see a baby penguin behind him. Toriko expressed surprise as the penguin species was considered extinct. Finding the baby penguin adorable, Komatsu wanted to take it along. However, Toriko warned that penguin parents might be searching for it, and they could be very aggressive. After Max entered the rest tent, others asked Max's subordinates why they followed him. It turned out they were born in a poor town called Neck, and Max used to bring food there, distributing it among hungry children. Grateful, they now followed him to repay the kindness and help him find more food for the hungry kids in their town. Toriko wondered why gourmet knights allowed a rookie like Takamaru to search for the century soup. It turned out Takamara volunteered to go alone to earn money for their leader's medical treatment. People in the gourmet nights were all searching for the century soup to help others, while Toriko's motive was merely to fill his own hungry stomach. Mansam knew Toriko was searching for the century soup but worried he might face difficulties alone, so he instructed Koko to assist him. While walking through a cave, Zong and Tina encountered a frozen, multi-mouthed monster. In their panic, the mysterious masked person approached, revealing himself as Tepe, a talkative young man. After a brief conversation, Tepe left, leaving Zon and Tina bewildered. Meanwhile, Toriko's group, on their quest for the century soup, was attacked by a swarm of insects with incredible speed. Unable to defeat them, Tommy, the summoner of the insects, intervened. In the midst of the battle, Tommy suddenly ordered the insects to retreat, and he, along with his two subordinates, headed straight for Toriko's group to handle them personally. Upon arriving, Tommy quickly ran to hug Toriko affectionately and took the opportunity to stab him in the abdomen. However, Toriko tensed his muscles, preventing Tommy from piercing through. As Toriko was about to punch Tommy in the face, he released a bizarre monster to bite Toriko's hand. Shortly after, two gigantic penguin parents arrived and attacked everyone, thinking they had captured their child. The enraged penguin stomped continuously until the ground cracked. The group fell into an underground tunnel, revealing an ice tower filled with cooking ingredients inside. They realized that the century soup would melt from this ice tower. Toriko's right hand was frozen by the bizarre monster Tommy released earlier. Toriko explained that the century soup would melt at the bottom of the ice tower. He instructed Komatsu to go down and search for the soup while he stayed to confront Tommy. As Bogey and Barry were about to chase Komatsu, Max and Takamaro rushed forward to block their path. Komatsu promised to find the century soup for everyone. Toriko was a bit curious as this time the Bishikokai didn't use robots for the battle. He knew Tommy had strength comparable to Star June in Green Park. Nevertheless, he was thrilled to face a sous chef with skills in both bones and flesh. The two penguin parents danced joyfully upon finding their child. As they ran down the bottom of the ice tower, Komatsu accidentally encountered Tepe. Suddenly, Tepe rushed towards Komatsu, startling him. However, Tepe only wanted to swat away some level 30 mosquitoes flying around Komatsu. Tepe discovered a small Bishikokai android lurking in the area. Hearing the loud noise from the penguin family, Tommy wanted them to shut up, so he immediately released a giant centipede to kill the two penguin parents. Witnessing this, Toriko thought that Tommy was a waste of space and didn't value the lives of other creatures. On the other side, Max continued to shoot bullets towards Barry, but Barry could excrete an extremely slippery oil to deflect the bullets. Takamaru was charging at Barry when Bogey stepped in to block the attack. Takamaru used his unique move, popping the cork from his bottle, to hit Bogey away from the bodyguard. It turned out that Bogey's ability involved taking control of other creatures' bodies and expanding his body according to his will. While being attacked from a distance by Bogey, Takamaru revealed his right eye, and Bogey realized that Takamaru was infected with a virus from the gourmet world. At this time, Koko hadn't yet gone to support Toriko but went to find Setsuno to talk. Takamaru continuously used his bottle-popping move to hit Bogey's ribcage, but it didn't work. Bogey's bone structure was entirely different from ordinary humans. While a regular person had 206 bones, Bogey had up to 4,000 to allow him to stretch his body at will. Bogey transformed his bones into a sickle and a weight and attacked Takamaru from a distance. Every time Takamaru used his bottle-popping move, his bones would instantly regenerate, leaving Takamaru helpless against Bogey's relentless attacks. However, Takamaru continued to fight because he wanted to find a cure for his captain. While Takamaru was using his internal energy, Bogey suddenly rushed in to attack him. However, Bogey's attack had no effect on Takamaru after he had finished channeling his internal energy. Takamaru also noticed a bone segment that Bogey couldn't regenerate. Immediately, Takamaru used his bottle-popping move to knock a bone segment out of Bogey. It turned out that this bone segment was the connection between the anus and the spine. Losing this bone segment left Bogey unable to move. 
As Takamara collapsed from exhaustion, Bobi also fell to the ground. Tepe tried to prevent Kamatsu from searching for the Century Soup, knowing that the tiny robot was dangerous. However, Kamatsu had promised Toriko to find the soup, and the one controlling the tiny robot was a guy named Ayu. The battle between Max and Barry was still intense, but Max's sword strike seemed ineffective because Barry wore an extremely robust armor made from the shell of a level 60 turtle. Barry's swift movements made it challenging for Max to react. Additionally, the layer of oil from Barry's body helped maintain heat, allowing him to fight easily in the freezing weather. Max's movement slowed down due to the bone-chilling cold, and he wanted to use a deadly move to defeat Barry, but it required time to channel his internal energy. His gang tried to hold Barry back for a while. However, being weak, they were punched by Barry and couldn't stand up. Nevertheless, Max and his gang successfully held Barry long enough for Max to complete his internal energy channeling. Max angrily rushed forward, delivering a swift and powerful strike with his sword. Max revealed that his sword was made from the teeth of a level 68 dragon, which had bitten through the turtle shell that Barry used for his armor and consumed its flesh. After Max's strike, Barry was completely defeated, but Max also collapsed due to exhaustion. While the battle between Toriko and Tommy was still raging fiercely, Toriko had to continuously use his flying fork technique to eliminate the hard-winged bugs vomited by Tommy. However, Tommy's swarm of bugs, numbering in the thousands, made it extremely difficult for Toriko. Max wanted to help Toriko defeat Tommy, but he was no match for either of them. Tommy released a swarm of explosive bugs that attached to Toriko and detonated simultaneously. Kamatsu had descended to the bottom of the ice pillar, only to realize that there was no century soup flowing here. Tepe then approached and covered Kamatsu's mouth, writing him a message. Despite Tepe's terrible handwriting, he conveyed to Kamatsu that he needed to stay silent because Marco had planted listening devices in their outfits. If Marco learned that there was no century soup, he would undoubtedly abandon everyone here. Zon's group, along with Tina, arrived at the location and was shocked to find no century soup. Tepe rushed to Zon to silence him, but the talkative guy accidentally revealed that there was no soup here. Marco, upon hearing this, ordered his ship to abandon the hunters and return home. After the explosion from Tommy's bugs, Toriko's thermal insulation suit was blown away. To avoid getting cold while shirtless, Toriko generated an immense amount of heat by shivering. Tina was horrified to learn that Marco would abandon everyone, and upon questioning, Kamatsu unexpectedly discovered that Tepe was a gourmet reviver. After shivering for a while, Toriko produced enough heat to melt the ice on his arm. However, continuous shivering would quickly deplete Toriko's energy. Tommy revealed that he couldn't continuously generate insects and that he was nurturing over 10,000 insect eggs in his stomach. He used energy to make them hatch when they reached his throat, but he still had enough strength to give birth to 1,000 insect offspring. At this moment, Koko had foreseen that everyone was in danger in the icy hell, and Setsuno had prepared numerous food boxes. They decided to go rescue them together. It turns out that gourmet revivers like Tepe often have the responsibility of protecting ingredients that are becoming extinct, and Tepe was sent here by his master to revive the century soup as it was about to disappear. It seemed that there was no more century soup flowing from the ice. Shortly after, a baby penguin came here looking for Kamatsu. Seeing its sad appearance, Kamatsu realized that its parents had been killed. Soon after, they saw a sudden aurora, and they joyfully realized that there was still a small amount of century soup somewhere around. Toriko was still trying to eliminate the swarm of insects vomited by Tommy, numbering in the thousands. However, the swarm kept increasing, surrounding Toriko completely. Tommy, exhausted after vomiting so many insects, along with Max, believed that Toriko must have been devoured by the flesh-eating insects. Tommy wanted to make sure, so he rushed forward to deliver a finishing blow to Toriko. However, Toriko suddenly escaped from the swarm of insects and unleashed a powerful blow that made Tommy vomit all the water. It turned out that when surrounded by the insect swarm, Toriko's gourmet cells automatically secreted an insecticide. This substance was the same as what plants produce to prevent insects from eating their stems and leaves. Sensing danger, Toriko's gourmet cells released this substance automatically. After smelling Toriko's insecticide, Tommy's insect swarm moved slower, so he decided to unleash a set of sharp teeth and personally defeat Toriko. Thanks to the insect wings, Tommy could move as fast as a hornet, making it impossible for Toriko to land a hit on him. Even Toriko's flying knives were ineffective against his overwhelming speed. Tommy attempted to use his sharp jaws to attack Toriko, but Toriko managed to cut one of Tommy's wings when he tried to get closer. Enraged, Tommy flared up to generate an immense amount of heat. He then continuously fired powerful explosive bullets at Toriko. Toriko realized that Tommy had heated the insect eggs inside his body and sprayed them out at high speed to make them explode. Despite losing his left arm, Toriko approached Tommy and unleashed a powerful barrage of punches called the Tenfold One Point Heavy Strike. 
As Toriko closed in, Tommy shot off Toriko's left arm, but Toriko managed to land the tenfold one-point heavy strike, making Tommy vomit. Toriko relentlessly continued to punch Tommy, breaking all his teeth with his right arm. The intense battle between the two caused the entire cave to tremble violently. Tepe extracted a seed called the forest planting seed from his ear and threw it toward the top of the cave. This seed grew into a giant vine that covered the entire ice tower, ensuring that it wouldn't collapse. Once certain the tower was secure, Tepe ran to assist Toriko. Despite the fierce fight, Toriko was noticeably weakening while Tommy remained strong. Tommy decided it was time to finish Toriko and tensed his muscles. Appearing like a giant. He charged forward and landed a powerful punch on Toriko without any resistance. Meanwhile, Kamatsu and Tina were still trying to find the century soup. Suddenly, the cave collapsed, separating the two. Fortunately, Kamatsu found the last remaining portion of the century soup on his side of the cave. But the miniature robot stopped Kamatsu and stole his portion of the soup. Toriko is currently facing a lot of difficulties because his right arm has exhausted all its strength. However, Toriko came up with a strategy using his knife and kicked Tommy's arm away. Then, he used a fork to pierce three holes in Tommy. Nevertheless, Toriko collapsed immediately due to exhaustion. Tommy, in anger, rushed to take Toriko's life despite being heavily injured. However, a bunch of vines suddenly appeared to protect Toriko before he could be finished off, and the one responsible for creating those vines was none other than Tepe. Tepe revealed that those who recover ingredients, like him, have the duty to capture the Bishakukai for their acts of destroying ingredients. Tommy and his two subordinates recognized Tepe as the grandson of legendary gourmet hunter Jiru. Just as Tommy lunged forward to attack, Tepe struck all his pressure points, rendering him immobile. However, Tommy still tried to vomit out a giant insect, a hybrid of a beetle and a spider. After releasing the creature, Tommy shrank, weakened, and collapsed. The beetle-like monster shot out an ice block, freezing Max's leg, and emitted a toxic smoke to attack Tepe, but he managed to evade. This monster could also shoot threads like a spider because Tommy had genetically engineered it from over 10 different species. Upon learning that the miniature robot had obtained the century soup, Barry and Bogey decided to leave. However, as they exited, they encountered the multi-mouthed creature they had frozen earlier. It immediately devoured Barry and Bogey. It turns out the multi-mouthed creature is the ruler of this continent, so Tepe released it. As soon as it saw the beetle, the multi-mouthed creature rushed to attack because it was very hungry after being frozen for hundreds of years. However, the beetle was also very strong, leading to an evenly matched battle between the two monsters. After tossing a peculiar leaf onto his hand, Tepe's nail suddenly extended. He used acupuncture with his elongated nails to revive Toriko. Following that, Tepe used medicinal herbs to bandage Takamaro and Max's injuries. Tina and the Zong group found Kamatsu unconscious. Upon waking up, Kamatsu cried when he realized he had lost the last century soup. The Toriko team carried the injured individuals to this location. Kamatsu apologized to Toriko and everyone for allowing the century soup to fall into the hands of the Bishikokai. However, Toriko prioritized the lives of everyone, so he did not blame Kamatsu. Setsuno had asked Tepe's master to assist Toriko in finding the century soup, but he was occupied with some important matters, so Tepe was sent instead. The two monsters were still fiercely battling outside, and the miniature robot delivered the soup he took from Kamatsu to a Bishikokai sous chef named Alfaral. Seeing the monsters causing a ruckus, Alfaral threw out six discs from his six hands to eliminate them. Surprisingly, Barry and Bogey fell out from inside the multi-mouthed creature. Tepe used a weed-killing medicine to wither the vines he created around the ice tower. He tried to collapse the ice tower, hoping to find the century soup, even if it was just a drop. Tepe succeeded in bringing down the ice tower, surprising everyone, and indeed, a small remaining drop of century soup appeared from the sky. Immediately after, the last drop of century soup fell into Kamatsu's hands, much to the joy of the entire group. However, with such a tiny drop of soup, they were unsure who should eat it. Everyone tried to give it to each other, even though they were all desperately hungry. Finally, they decided to let Kamatsu taste the drop of soup so he could experience its flavor and recreate it in the future. Kamatsu promised not to disappoint everyone and consumed the last drop of century soup. After finishing it, Kamatsu laughed like a fool because the soup was incredibly delicious. Alfaral and his two subordinates were planning to eliminate Toriko to reduce the number of opponents. Toriko and Tepe sensed that Alfaral was much stronger than Tommy. However, Setsuno appeared to block Alfaral and his subordinates. Alfaral wondered why someone of Setsuno's caliber was in such a desolate place. Setsuno explained that she came to bring Toriko and his friends back home, and if Alfaral dared to harm Toriko, she would make sure he stayed in that place permanently. As Setsuno left, Alfaral intended to launch his discs secretly, but they shattered instantly at the sound of her cough. 
Realizing he was no match for her, Alfril ordered his subordinates to carry Tommy and fled. Toriko and his friends finally found their way out of the cave, only to be shocked to discover that Marco had abandoned them. However, their joy returned when Coco arrived on the Emperor Crow to rescue them. Setsuno also brought a giant limousine jellyfish to transport them home. Ecstatic, everyone climbed onto Setsuno's limousine jellyfish. The limousine jellyfish, despite being a living creature, provided all the amenities of a home. Toriko couldn't contain his excitement when Setsuno prepared a feast for everyone. They eagerly indulged in the food to regain their strength after a challenging journey. Tina, on the other hand, was busy recording a video for YouTube, as she forgot to capture the century soup. However, if she could capture Setsuno's culinary creations, it was sure to attract many views. Setsuno was very angry because she had assigned the task of supporting Toriko to Master Yasaku of Tepe, and he had pushed it to his disciple. Setsuno said that Toriko could heal his arm when he arrived at Recovery Country. After many hours of flying, Setsuno took everyone to Recovery Country to treat Toriko and other injured young men. As for Kamatsu, she took him to Igo's hotel to study how to make the century soup. Because Max's siblings were still seriously injured, everyone had to carry them into the city by stretcher, and Recovery Country was a place where many people gathered for treatment with various types of clinics, such as acupuncture with dragon bone or shark back bath. But when Toriko saw Zong in the bath, he didn't want to take a bath anymore. In those baths, there were small fish with the ability to suck toxins out of the human body. After taking a stroll, Toriko accidentally met Sani, who was also bathing here. It turned out that Sani came to Recovery Country to enjoy items that could make his hair smooth, but besides that, Sani also wanted to find a dessert to add to his menu. After talking for a while, Sani was shocked to realize that Toriko had lost one arm like Shanks, and Tepe informed him that his master, Yasaku, could restore Toriko's severed arm. Just mentioning Yasaku, everyone suddenly saw him sitting and eating at a nearby table. So they called Yasaku to join them and recounted the whole story to him. But everyone was very surprised to find out that Yasaku was an old man who lived without any principles. Meanwhile, Koko returned to Igo to report the situation to Mansam and the vice chairman. Rin, knowing that Toriko was injured, hurriedly went to recovery country. Upon returning to the hotel, Kamatsu immediately ran into the kitchen to study how to make the century soup. As for Tina, she asked the hotel manager for permission to go back to film the process of Kamatsu making the soup. Upon learning that Toriko's group was injured, Yusaku immediately took them to a giant tree in the middle of recovery country, where all the material recovery experts lived inside this tree. As they entered Yusaku's house, everyone was amazed by the variety of almost extinct creatures in his house. Yusaku threw Max's siblings into some flower buds with healing properties. Then, he spat a strange liquid on their wounds and told them to sit still for self-recovery. Since childhood, Takemaru had suffered from an illness caused by a virus from the gourmet world. Diseases from the gourmet world are often incurable at the root, but Captain Aimaru of the Gourmet Knights cured Takamara's illness. Aimara had the ability to consume viruses in the bodies of others, and he traveled everywhere to save people by eating viruses. As a result, toxins were accumulating in his body. Takamaru pleaded with Yasaku to find a way to save his captain. Yasaku was deeply grateful for Takamaru's kindness toward Aimaru, so he gave Takamaru a medicine that could partially cure Aimaru's illness without taking any money. Upon arriving, Rin immediately ran to inquire about Toriko. Rin threatened Yasaku that if he couldn't treat Toriko's arm, she would spray him with constipation gas. Not wanting to smell manure, Yasaku proceeded to treat Toriko's severed arm. Yasaku needed a lot of Toriko's DNA, so he cut off the hair on top of his head. Then, Yasaku planted a type of flower on Toriko's hair to absorb DNA. All of Toriko's DNA was stored in the glowing particle in the middle of the flower. While trying to take the particle out, Yusako suddenly sneezed, causing it to shatter. He had to plant another tree and insert the particle into Toriko's severed arm. During this time, Kamatsu continued his research on how to make the century soup. However, he didn't allow Tina into the kitchen to film because he didn't want the recipe to be leaked. Upon seeing Toriko's new hairstyle, Sani couldn't help but laugh. During the treatment process, all the nutrients on Toriko's body would be directed to the recovery of his left arm. Consequently, Toriko had to keep eating continuously to prevent his body from shrinking. Several months later, Kamatsu successfully created a century soup that was as transparent as Setsuno's. However, he still couldn't find the final ingredient to complete the dish. When Kamatsu saw the bowl of soup, a small bird suddenly shed all its feathers. And its droppings fell into the bowl. A prism appeared, and after tasting a spoonful, Kamatsu laughed foolishly, resembling the moment when he tasted the soup in ice hell. Meanwhile, Yusaku successfully helped Toriko regenerate his left arm. Toriko sensed that Kamatsu might have completed the century soup. 
Komatsu couldn't believe that the crucial final ingredient for the century soup was the droppings of the bald canary. The media gathered at Igo's hotel to interview Komatsu because reviving the century soup was a shocking piece of news. Famous culinary critics also came to taste Komatsu's soup, but he refused to let them try it. Komatsu wanted Toriko and his friends who had traveled with him in ice hell to be the first to taste it. Komatsu invited Setsuno because she had taught him a lot during the process of making this legendary soup. Komatsu invited all his friends to a VIP room to enjoy the century soup. As they opened the bowls, the room was filled with radiant prism light. Upon tasting a spoonful, Toriko felt layers of flavors accumulated from ancient times to the present. The soup also brought a sense of comfort, making everyone burst into foolish laughter. Toriko then decided to add the century soup to his divine menu. When Toriko expressed his desire to choose the soup he made, Komatsu became extremely emotional. Komatsu had made many soups that the Max brothers brought back to the children in their town. Toriko also asked Takamaru to bring a bowl of soup to give to Aimara because, after all, Toriko and Aimara used to be close friends. At this point, Alfarol also brought the century soup he had obtained to his boss in the Bishakukai organization. However, the boss instructed Alfarol to give it to the subordinates to enhance their strength. The boss was more interested in gourmet world foods, and he dismissed human world dishes. Toriko and Komatsu brought two bowls of soup to Yasaku and Sani for them to taste in the recovery country. However, after seeing the three of them laugh foolishly after eating, Sani didn't dare to try it. Thank you for watching Toriko Part 4, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to receive notifications when the channel releases new videos.